All right. Yo, yo, Komiyama. Welcome to Empower Network TV. Very excited to be interviewing you today. Thank you, Amos. I am very excited to be here today as well. Yeah, well, and you're fairly new to the group. Like Cindy invited you in and you accepted, yeah. what, a couple of weeks ago? And then you yeah. pretty quickly joined our academy and our Ripple program too. So I, I'm very excited to see what you and Cindy do in the Ripple program as well as the Academy. But yes. so welcome here. It's um, and you're in, you. you said you're in uh, New York City at, or New York area and you guys had rain yesterday, but you have sun today. Yes, it was <laughs> raining all day yesterday. So the commute into work was not a happy one, uh, but, <laughs> but it's okay. At least I got to get into work. So, you know, okay. that's my outlook. <laughs> Beautiful. And we're talking about loving ourselves, loving yourself today. And what yes. it, that entails in your journey and, and through life, through work and mindset stuff. Where, where should we start? Should we start with where you're at today or what brought you up to today, your story? What do you prefer? Wow. Um, well, where I am today is I'll start with that because I'm in a good place today. Um, it was funny that you should bring that up because yesterday I was talking to a colleague of mine and she goes, are you happy? And I was like, wow, what a question. And I said, yeah, I'm happy. And I said, I'm happy with my life now. I'm happy where I am in life, um, in my personal journey, as well as in my career and where I'm going, because I have a goal I've set that I want to achieve. And my ultimate goal, of course, is um, you know, I'd like, it's mostly for women, but men too, <laughs> so that, you know, people can feel empowered about themselves, to love themselves and to feel that power from coming from loving themselves so that they can love others and spread that joy. Mm -hmm. And it really comes from mindset. And I was talking to this friend and I said, yeah, I'm really happy about everything that's going on right now. I'm happy with myself. I'm happy with my body image which I struggled with for years um, with my relationship with food, which I struggled with as well. Um, I did have an eating disorder for a while. So, you know, I know that route as well. And I've worked in the wellness industry uh, for about 20 plus years. And I've seen women struggling with that part. And yes, the food is important, but it's also up here that's important. And the love that you give yourself and um, it's funny because yesterday I was telling this friend, the first exercise that I always do in the morning, even for myself, is I get up, I look in the mirror, and I really say, Yayoi, I love you. Aww. And I know that, I know that's kind adorable. of silly. Adorable. No, it's not. That's adorable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but it's, it was so difficult at first. I was like, this is so silly. This is so stupid. I don't know if I could do this. You know, wow. and my mentor suggested it. And I was like, he said, do it for 10 days and just see what it's like. Well, that, well and, that's, let's, let's say that as a personal challenge, because like I have, yeah. I, I've done that maybe a few times in my life. So as whatever as that sounds, that is one of the hardest things probably to do, to look yourself and to square yourself off and to go, I yes. love you. Yes. So good for you. Anyway, sir, I just wanted to say, because that's a major thing you did. That's not a small thing. And um, I continue doing it every morning. Like I get up, uh, wow. weird thing is that by my bed, I have this huge mirror, right? Um, so that after I get up, um, you know, I have to walk past the mirror to get anywhere. So I just look in the mirror as soon as I get up and I look at myself and I say my name and I say, I love you. And, and then I start my day off because then I feel like my day is, you know, starting off powerfully and and then I do wow. my power pose, <laughs> which is this. <laughs> Let's talk about the I power pose. Okay, so what is the power pose? So does it actually do something? It must do something. Yes, yes. It's, it's your pose for to feel that power to, you know, and it's also for my intention for the day so Amazing. that I feel like I want to start my day off right. And, you know, yeah. these easy little things build yeah. up and they create this power within me and it fuels my passion it fuels my mission really and um wow. so 
I do the mirror exercise first and I just say, you know, yeah, yo, I love you. That's the first thing I do. And then I do this to say, to create a V for victory because I'm going to have a victorious day. Wow. And, and that's the intent that I bring with me while I go through my morning rituals and everything. So that that's, you know, that's my intent. And at the end of the day, wow. when I, before I go to sleep, you know, I kind of review what went on and I'm like, yeah, I had a pretty damn good day. <laughs> you know, sorry about yeah. that. I had a oh. pretty good day. Okay. And, um, you know, it's like, so that I can, you know, I re- also realized throughout this journey that I've had that I've met several people. Um, and there's one woman who I really admire in my neuroencoding class. She went through um, traumatic brain injury. She was in a car accident. And she, when I first met her, she had ve- a difficulty even speaking again because she had to relearn how to speak. And I watched a video, uh, a Facebook video that she posted, and she was talking about how you never know what will happen in an instant. And she was in a car, she was in the passenger seat, somebody else was driving, and then this other woman was in a car that was texting, and she drove into and ran right into their car. And that's how she had this brain injury. And... I was like, wow, I mean, your life wow. changes in an instant and it can, yeah. and yeah. you know, anything could happen. I mean, I just had an injury, a freak accident recently where I had sprained my ankle. I thought it was a sprain. It was, turned out to be a fracture. I was in a boot and I was in crutches, right? And I was inside somewhere and someone walked right behind me and I lost my balance. And I fell over backwards. I hit my head. And it became a big bump. Uh, Fortunately, I was very, very lucky that it was just a mild concussion, but it could have been worse. I could have, you know, back here also affects your motor skills and other skills that I could have been disabled in some way or another. And, or, you know, something else could have happened. Who knows? So that really hit home for me. And I'm like, wow, that was actually a, a good thing. That happened in late June of this year. And it made me slow down a little bit and reevaluate everything as well. And that's why my morning rituals became more important to me and more meaningful to me because of that oh. freak accident. Because I really appreciate life now. Yeah. Oh. It's amazing. So neuroencoding, you are, yes. so you're a coach with that. So how does that work? I, I yes. only know that of that because of you and Cindy. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. I am a, I've been a transformation coach for a long time now. Um, I've also was a coach in this other wellness group that I company that I worked for part time. And um, so I'm a trained coach. And also I'm a neuroencoding specialist, which is, we have this institute called the Neuroencoding Institute. It's led by our mentor, whose name is Joseph McClendon III. He's a speaker, he's a presenter, very magnetic person. And his thinking is that, you know, he was a neuropsychologist as well. And he developed this program using all of the techniques that he used within his practice that worked for his clients. So he said, I'm gonna take all the little pieces, you know, he studied different modalities and he said, I'm gonna take all of them and create something, you know, that use use everything that worked for him, for his clients and create it into a system. And that's what's called neuroencoding. And it's really about rewiring your brain, your thinking patterns, because we all have patterns. And it's so that we can, rewire it so that you default to your most positive and empowering self. So it could be something as simple as what we say, we like to say in neuroencoding is that as you think, so you feel, as you feel, so you do, as you do, so you have. So thinking, feeling, doing, and that creates magnetism to bring it all in together. 
Mm. And and it's something that you can do, anyone could do. And his philosophy and my philosophy is that anyone could change their patterns, change what's negative into positive. You have to do it, you have to do the work. It's not like you could do it once and it'll miraculously change. I wish I had a magic wand to do that, but I don't. <laughs> but um, you have to do the work. And, but it's simple work, it's easy to do. It's simple, it's simple things that you can do, like that mirror exercise. You know, if you do it for 10, the first time that I did it, it was a challenge. It said, you know, you said, do it for 10 days. And I'm like, crap. I look in the mirror and I'm like, I can't do this. You know, no. this is silly. And then I'm like, okay, let me just try it. And, you know, he said, you know, pretend that you could do it. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to do it for 10 days. And I started doing it. And I'm like, you know, it makes me feel good. You yeah. smile, you look at yourself, you smile, so the smile releases dopamine, you feel good about it. And you're basically <laughs> encoding your brain by doing that as well. Because you're saying by smiling and saying, I love you to yourself, you're encoding your brain to say, that feels good. Let me do it again. So that oh. repetition, yes, that repetition creates that love and then you know, when you're feeling good about yourself, you radiate that. And I know that um, I have a dog and I walk her every morning. And on my morning walks, I'm trying to radiate that love because I'm already coming from a place of love saying, you know, I love myself, right? And I'm just saying, you know what? I'm going to send out the love to everyone that I walk past. And, and that's good, you know? And, yeah. you know, my my dog feels it every time I walk with her. And so I feel like even if it's just me feeling like I'm doing something, at least I'm trying to spread that love, you know, around me. and it comes wow. from here. So I need yeah. to do that more. I, I don't even know how often I think I've done that once a year, told myself I love myself. Like that's, that's, that's kind of sad, I'm sure. But I think it's like when once a year, when someone, provoked me to do it i need to do that i'm sure others maybe feel the same like i mean wow. yeah. yeah it's a challenge but you know i'm, I'm going to challenge you to do it at least once a day for 10 days and see what happens okay because, I, i'm, I'm going to yeah. pull the group and find out i'm going to throw a poll in this group and ask others um how often they tell themselves they love themselves i'm curious what everyone else's experience is because mine is it's not been very often, so I'm curious. But anyway, you were going to say something because challenge yourself because. Because without challenging yourself and feeling a little uncomfortable, you're not going to grow. And life is about growth, right? Uh, that's how I feel anyway. I feel that life is about growing. It's about evolving because you want to evolve. You want to grow. I'm going to go to the washroom right now and, and do this. Right here. <laughs> Seriously? Look, yeah. Hell yeah. I'm gonna go in and do this in the bathroom because why not? <laughs> I love Amos. It. I love you. I fucking love you, man. And victory. Smile. Yes. 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 Hey, it's not probably not anywhere close to perfect, but it's a start. So there we go. It's a start, and that and praise yourself because praise is another thing that we tend to forget to do about with ourselves. Okay. We praise others. Like as a mother, if you're a mother, even if you're a friend, you praise your friend, your mother, or what you know, your kid, for yeah. doing something right. But you yeah. never, you forget to praise yourself. So always after you do that, say, "Hey, I did it! Woohoo! I praised myself. Pat yourself on the back." Way to go! Yeah, did it, did yeah. it. Woohoo! Yeah, and that also that gesture alone that's a gesture that's anchoring that feeling into your body. And it's also anchoring it into your brain. And those simple things can make a huge difference in somebody's life. Because you have because, a lot of joy in your eyes. Did you always like, how recently did you get this? <laughs> you always had joy? Maybe as a kid but it took me a long time to get to this place. Um, it's been a journey. I grew up in two cultures. Um, I was 
I'm originally from Japan and my parents are Japanese. And uh, I also grew up here in the US. So as a child, I was here in the US. And, you know, of course, there were very few people that looked like me <laughs> in my grade school. And so I would get teased a lot about the way I looked, yeah. you know, my eyes, my nose, whatever. And so I had, you know, that made me sad all the time and anxious. And, but I was also a fighter, so I would always fight back. Good. And, uh, that, that, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It could be both, right? Fair. It's a double-edged sword. And then also when I went back to Japan, I was teased a lot because I wasn't, I didn't fit the proper mold of a Japanese girl because I would always be in jeans and a t-shirt, which is normal here in the US. But in Japan, girls always wear skirts and they dress properly. <laughs> and I was a tomboy. Properly, so properly. Yeah, yeah, properly. Air quotes. Yeah. Yeah. So that um, growing up there, it was tough for me. So I turned to food because um, that's my, yeah. Sure. I turned to food because food became my friend. It gave me the comfort that I wasn't yeah. getting. Dopamine, absolutely. Exactly. And um, that also, that caused problems for my body, of course. So I was, um, gosh, by seventh grade, I was probably very, very heavy. I was 30 pounds heavier than I am now. And just a hint, I am five feet on a good day. So... <laughs> So on a good day a lot. Yeah. on a good day there you go on a good day and as soon as i get up i think <laughs> yeah, yeah after stretching i'm five feet yes yep, uh, yep. Uh, fair enough so so um i did deal with that and then of course body image and all of those insecurities came out and especially when you're in junior high high school those are tough times mm. and i went through that journey and of uh, hating myself hating my body didn't know where I belonged for a long time. And uh, through self-development, personal development, through learning different techniques like this, breathing, meditation, um, and my own personal journeys, you know, I was married before and that, that wasn't the best experience I had. Although from that, Sure. I was born. So, you know, without I love that. that. I, be... I love the way you said that. From that, I was born. Wow. Yeah. Others are going to steal that and use that. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That's beautiful. Well, because, yeah. you know, we go, every one of us, we go through yeah. our journeys. And, you know, coming through on the other end, in retrospect, you know, if it weren't for all of those struggles that I had with food, overcoming that, overcoming my issues with my ex-husband, um, which, you know, caused insecurities in me. And I wouldn't be who I am. And I wouldn't feel confident in who I am now. Because I'm uh -huh. like, I don't care what anyone thinks anymore. I used to be very, very like nervous about how others perceive me or what others would think. It's also a cultural thing that, you know, we don't want the uh, uh, neighbors to think that you're crazy or you're, you're radical or, you know. Even if you are. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> hey, I, I came born with that spirit. Good, good. We need more of those. <laughs> and so um, I try to suppress that a lot for yeah. most of my life. And I think um, throughout my journey, being on my own, um, you know, when I first got divorced, I didn't have a permanent job. I didn't have a steady job. I yeah. was doing uh, more, I was more of a housewife. And I was also doing a lot of uh, freelance translating and freelance stuff. So, and part-time jobs. So I didn't have any solid full-time job. And it was a struggle to find one. And when I finally did find one, you know, of course, you have to start at the bottom and you finally work your way up. And through those journeys or voyages, maybe, I learned so much about myself. Um, and some of it wasn't easy, you know, but I'm like, I'm the type of person that's like, I love superheroes. I love manga and anime. 
So <laughs> I'm always like, I'm going to be the hero, right? <laughs> I'm going to be. And my favorite hero is like Spider-Man. So <laughs> you're going to think I'm crazy. No, no, no. I love the the Spider-Man that was like something home. Return, or Were the three oh. of them were on? Yes. yes oh, my yes, gosh. Yes, the ones. oh, my great, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Right? Oh, the. Yeah. yeah anyway it was oh no way home and yeah but yeah. um oh. spider-man's my favorite and he's always been my favorite since i was a kid and you know all of them are heroes and i'm like mm. i want to be my own hero so mm. i'm like i don't if even if people say you can't do it i want to do it and i'm going to mm. show them that i could do it and i think it's because of the mangas and the superheroes that i feel that way yeah because they when i was in my you know depressions and when I was like eating myself silly you know I would always be watching manga or reading uh watch reading manga or watching my animes or my superheroes because they gave me hope yeah. and that's the same with literature you know I love to read so I was always reading books um and adventures and of course it's always on those sci-fi adventure fantasy things that I love but it's always about being the hero and being on a journey and finding wow. yourself. Wow. And I think, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It resonates because we, that's what everyone's looking for. Well, yeah, I think I, everyone's looking for that to find that hero within. Yeah. And we all have it. Yeah. And one of my mission is to, you know, ig ignite that passion again of living because I lost it when mm you know, going through all the things as in childhood, the eating, all of that. And I found it again, because I looked within and did the work, the personal development work about loving myself, doing the mirror exercises, doing exercises to find out what my identity was. And by finding that, you know, the eating got easier. I wasn't stuffing myself to hide my emotions anymore. And learning that part, just that made a huge difference. And learning to listen to my body, to love my body for what it is. Because I always felt that, you know, as an Asian person, I had to be a stick figure, right? More or less. Uh, that's the stereotype of the Asian woman being very, very skinny. And, you know, and... Um, I never fit that, you know, I've always been a little muscular, tomboy, that type of thing. And I learned that it's okay to be who I am. And I don't have to conform to anything. And, you know, every, like every star in the sky is different, right? And everyone has a different way of shining and radiating the light. And I feel that we as human beings have the same thing. And... Oh. I want each person to be able to radiate and shine their own light, their own beauty, because we all have it. What a gift and, you are, Yoyoy. Oh, what a gift thanks. you are. I'm so glad you're here telling your story and sharing with others because this will resonate with so many people. This is exactly and you're doing it in such a joyful way. You just you just in cat you and you're just joyful. You're just like, look at your face. You're just like a bucket of joy. An almost five foot and after you wake up and stretch, bucket of joy. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Victory. Yes. And oh. I like being happy. I mean, what why not, right? Yeah, if you have the not? alternative to be if it is the choice to be happy or depressed all the time, I'd rather be happy. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember that depression and it was not pretty. Yeah. Well, how how are people gonna connect with you? I'm gonna be tagging you in the interview here, but do you have like some uh oh. links or social media stuff you do What's... i'm i'm on um i'm on facebook as yayoi komiyama yep. and i do have a facebook group called um food circus which is kind of tied into my whole Fun. and um i also have uh different i also pr i'm a promoter for this thing called ketones but that's a different story but sure. um that's also for your health as well. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, join, you know, become a friend of mine on Facebook and then I'll invite you to Food Circus. Oh, no, so put the links here. Put the oh, Facebook link okay. in the comments after, oh. please. Yeah, that's what this is okay. for. I will. 
Okay. If you have a Facebook group that. or any funnel or book link, yeah. drop those links yeah. here. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I also have a website. It's why uh, Komiyama at, well, all right. I'll put it in yeah, there yeah, put it in as the, well. In the yes. message. Yeah. The, yeah. The comments. And, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I will put it in there because, yeah. And I would love to connect with a lot of people. I mean, even if it's just for a talk, one talk. And hey, if I could spread a little joy, make you smile a little bit for that day, you know, hey, I've done something. Well, that's how everything starts is talk. So yeah, if you have been moved or, or magnetized by Yayoi this morning, please reach out to her, connect with her. She'd love to connect with you and, and dump some of her bucket of joy on you today. <laughs> Yayoi, thanks for being here. This was an absolute pleasure. Wonderful, wonderful way to start my work day. So uh -huh. I look forward to seeing in the academy and in our Ripple program. So I'm yes. even more excited now to see what you do in our Ripple program. <laughs> and um, have you and Cindy planned your Ripples yet? Have you guys talked about not, that yet? Not yet, but I'm thinking I have a little signature. Well, it's kind of like a, almost like an elevator speech that I, I have. Okay, awesome. So I thought I'd do that as my sure. first Ripple. The first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll look yeah, forward to We'll take okay. it from there. We'll take yeah. it from there. It sounds good. And I'm yeah. going to do a demo so everyone feels comfortable. I'll throw good. it in there to, <laughs> yes. uh, today or tomorrow latest. So I'll be the first to go. <laughs> thank you. Well, that thank you so great. much, Yayoi, for being here. Thanks. If you've been listening, watching Empower Network TV today, please connect with Yayoi. She is uh, just a joy. And uh, what a great story you have. And um, I'm just honored you're part of this community. So thanks for taking the time. I'm honored to be here. Thank you, Amos. We'll chat soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.